Hey everyone, it's Diane here from Deco Easy. Jenny and I have a new video for you. We're going to show you something new creative today. If you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hit the bell button so we can send you a new notification when we upload a video. And please, we also like if you give this video a big thumbs up. Let's start crafting! Hey everyone, it's Diane here with a new Christmas DIY for you today. Uh, if you're curious what we're going to do, then keep on watching. As you can see, I'm going to make use of this canvas here. This is the back. It comes from Action, similar to Dollar Tree in the United States. But then this is a Dutch shop with a lot of cheap crafting supplies. Literally, you have everything. Um, this one cost me, I think... 4 euros and I want to make a glamorous pink Christmas sign for uh, maybe my kitchen, maybe my hallway, I don't know that yet but that's what I want to do today um, I'm going to paint the back pink and I'm going to transform it into some sort of painting sign idea so not the way as it is right now um, but how we're going to do that I will show you in the next steps let's come along for this project you'll need first a brush a knife to cut open the plastic, but later on to cut off the canvas. And some paint. I'll be using this pink one from the convenience store. First, let's open up the plastic that covers the canvas. Watch out not to cut yourself or the canvas, because then you can throw this thing away instantly. This smells always super strong, opening up the canvas. Okay, this is rubbish. Let's throw that away. Put the knife back in. Let's just store it there. Well, I'm always curious, where are these for? Every single canvas you buy has a plastic bag with these wooden things. Can anyone tell me where that is for? Because I don't know. Okay, let's paint. Oh, this is also rubbish. Get away. Time to paint. Still have to stir the paint because I stored it for a few days and now it is completely oily on top. So, yeah. I always find this super well, satisfying to watch, like you're, you know, staring in some kind of huge milkshake. Okay, the stir part is done. Time to start making this whole thing pink. Maybe I could have used a bigger brush, but I don't have one at hand. There we go. This is my color for this Christmas. It's maybe not as traditional as normal people have at home. It isn't a really common color here, I think. Whenever Jenny and I visit Christmas shows, they always have a small part of pink Christmas items. Because I think that is a shame because it is such a lovely color. Popular colors here are red, green, gold, silver, white, blue, and yeah, black is also popular this year. I don't know why. I thought black was, yeah, popular for a longer time, but you see a growth of black Christmas items this year. Okay, just continue until we're done. And then I thought um, to let this thing dry for, yeah, well, an hour, I think. Hope that will be enough. As you can see, we have a complete pink sign now. Time to transform it into a painting, and therefore I'm using this knife. What I want to do, uh, I will show you. I'm going to cut here. I'm going to cut away the canvas. So I have to stand up for this job. Do it carefully. Because there is a complete wooden wreck, actually, 
behind the fabric behind the white fabric and yeah I want to some sort of reverse how it looks now but therefore I first need to cut off the canvas itself and I hope that it worked instantly because now I can carefully as you can see here, I'm going to carefully peel off the fabric. No, this one isn't cut properly. Well, on the edges is always a tricky thing because here are several layers of canvas together and don't want to destroy the whole canvas so be careful what well, this is going to take some while as you can see when I'm done I will show you how it looks look just turn the whole thing over and then you have wood except here for the corners wood and a large canvas. Let's put the knife away. Of course, there is still some canvas here at the back. Need to remove that. But I wanted to show you the wooden front here. Well, it is blank. You can paint it, but I think I'm going to use bee wax to give it a nice, dark, authentic stain. Um, I also was in doubt maybe black is a good idea. I'm not completely sure if I'm happy with a black uh, frame around a soft pink sweet painting. So I think I'm going to make it just a wooden color, but then a little bit darker than it is right now. There are just some staples here at the back where the canvas is stapled to it. I'm going to remove that now. And after that, we're going to be wax this whole thing. Okay, I put the canvas away and took out our favorite bee wax and this old brush. As you can see, bee wax pretty much ruins up your brush. I'm always using the same one. Protect your workspace because bee wax is nasty stuff if you get it in your clothes or something. Now I'm just going to stain the whole thing, just dab the brush into the bee wax. Ventilate your room. Can't repeat that enough. And then we can just start brushing away. Don't forget to do the inner sides as well. Because of course you're still going to see that after you put the canvas back on. Because the canvas will be glued to the back part of the wood. Everything is done, now we need to let it dry and then I can do the outer parts because that is still what I need to do. And then we can continue gluing the canvas to the frame. Gluing time! I'm going to use just universal glue here on the back of the wooden frame and then I'm carefully going to press it here and then I'm going to let it dry for, well, actually quite a long time. I think we're going to put two heavy toolboxes on top of the uh, frame. And yeah, then the glue can dry. And then we can go do further crafting. Okay, the glue is attached to the frame. I'm really going to pick it up carefully. And this stuff smells woo, super strong. It has to be done in one. The hair here. Yeah, everything is covered up. We're really going to press it down on the canvas. Oh, this mat here needs to be put away. Oops, forgot that. Nope, nothing is attached to the table. Going to put some toolboxes on it, heavy stuff, and then it can dry. Time to decorate the painting. I found some really cute and free printables on Pinterest. This one here and this wonderful Christmas tree. 
really, I record at the time it took me half an hour to cut this one out. Look at all the leaves, such detail. But I'm glad I did it, because now it looks a little bit more high-end. And then I'm going to do something like this. Just with glue, brush it on the back of the paper and then gluing it to the sign. I don't think I will do a gloss finish or um, a sealer because I want to have the matte look. Because the paint is also matte. So I'm going not going to disturb you with all this filming material because that will take some time. Also for the drying process. But when it's done I will show you. And here you can see the final result. I really hope that you like how the DIY turned out. And to be honest, I am pretty happy with the print of the tree in combination with the soft pink color. And this was a very cute print that I found on Pinterest. Hey everyone, it's Diane here. I'm going to make a Christmas ornament today. We have a lot of stuff here upon the table, but this is everything you need for the following DIY. It is very easy to do so. And uh, yeah, to start with, I have a plastic bowl. I have yarn, but you can also use twine, a hammer, glue. Uh, I have some gloves, cling film here, scissors, nails. This one is a cork coaster. And I also have just a random pattern of a star. Take a pattern like this, you know, with straight lines across each other, otherwise, you know, this uh, DIY will, will fail. Uh, what I'm going to do, I will explain to you now. Well, okay, uh, let's start with the first thing, cutting out the star. This will be the base of the DIY. I'm only going to cut out here around the lines roughly you can leave a little bit of space open if you want to on the edge and I measured how large my star needed to be this one is 15 by 15 centimeters at least the image is um, like this now you're going to take some cling film here and this thing sticks like crazy to whatever you're covering with it. Make a little bit of space here. Oh. And spread it out across your project. Of the cling film. Use an old cork coaster, by the way, to protect your new stuff from damaging. Now there is a little bit of air underneath here. Now, following step. Next step is to put some screws or nails. I use this one here. And, you know, take the hammer, carefully put them on the point of the star. Oh, I could, could have used smaller ones. Now I see this. Well. Let's just continue hammering them all down, not too far, because otherwise you nail the whole cork to the table. If you're curious,
curious if you're protected your workspace well enough. I'm always using this green cutting board, the craft board you see underneath here. Well, everything well so far. Image is now perfectly attached to the cord. I'm going to put this away because I don't need this anymore. Now the cord will look like this. Here you see the nails. I don't need the scissors right now. Okay, now it's time to get messy. This is rubbish. Get out. And I'm going to draw this yarn here in glue. Now I have several types of glue. This is the tacky glue. Everything, by the way, you see here comes from Action. Literally everything, uh, including this one here, the work workspace protector. And I also have Crea patch glue. This is just a dupe of Mod Podge. And I'm going to mix these two up. Just taking apart the whole bottle. Oh, if you want to stir, of course. Then, ooh, this stuff is super, super fluent. Or fluid, actually, and this one is a bit thicker. So I think this stuff here works the best for the yarn. I'm using two bowls, by the way, just for some extra security. Uh, just a little bit left, I think. Well, I'm just emptying the bottles and I'm going to need some more Korea patch glue, I think. Because the whole bottom part needs to be filled up with glue. This one. Really, I can't have enough of these bottles. This stuff is superb. And yeah, the tacky glue isn't my favorite because, as the name says, it stays tacky but then super long. Okay, this one is empty now. And I'm going to find myself something to stir this whole thing because, oh, of course, I can also do this. Super easy. Well, that mixes in too, from left to right, and so on. Okay, next step, draw on the yarn, but therefore we need to wear these gloves. Okay, glove time. I'm just using latex ones. These are super handy to have at home. Also use them when I spray paint items, or Jenny and I use them when we have Super glue DIYs. There we go. Now, move this lid of the yarn. Now, where to start? I think here. Yeah, there is the beginning. If you're wondering, Diane, why are you having pink yarn? Because I want pink Christmas items. Now, take off some yarn. Oh, of course I can measure how much I need because I can just wrap it around. By doing that, I'm using no more yarn than I need to have to. Okay, I'm holding it here. Let me go here. Oh. Up here. Here. And here. Oh, it's pretty hard actually. Oh. Stuff is, by the way, super, super silky. Maybe it is a better idea to do this with twine. <laughs> but I don't have I've seen pink twine. Or a thicker rope. I think three times will be enough. Ah, oh, well. Maybe I'm just too cheap or cheeky trying to measure the whole thing here. But it concerns me that 
liner rolls back up again. Why am I doing this? What was this idea? Okay, I think I'll make it this thick. Star with it three times and then putting the string somewhere here well let's say we need up to here then cut this off put this away take this whole thing off again and then it is time to mess ourselves so wear old clothes and this glue is washable Go. Now just let's bathe it in the glue until it is soaked. Don't matter if you have some extra glue because now I'm going to take the axis glue off just by sliding it through my fingers and this is a tricky job because you can mess up your whole project. So be careful, don't pull too hard. Only press down on the yarn or twine to get rid of the extra glue. Sometimes you need to pull here to prevent having a huge knot upon your yarn. Oh, I think that is what's going to happen now. Please don't. Yeah, there we go. Look how much glue there still comes out of the yarn. So close to the end. Please don't mess up. Well. Yarn is a lot of trickier to work with, that is my experience now, than working with twine. And the problem with yarn is I can't see where the knot is because there's super super amount of glue on the end. Carefully pressing it down. Nope, just one knot here. Yeah, there we have it. Phew, okay, made it. Now I'm going to repeat the same steps, only now the yarn is glued. And this is why the cling film is important. I think leaving it here is a better idea. Okay. Pressing it down on the nails. Now I'm going to work around like this. Actually, it was a good idea for me to practice first with a non-glued yarn. Or if you're using twine, then I recommend you to practice as well. Because now you know which way you have to move. Also, how tight you have to pull to get the yarn in the right place. Almost there. Pressing it down once again. There we go. I'm going to do it four times. Is there enough? No, not enough. Okay. Then I'm going to leave it like this three times. And then tuck this one in, I think, underneath here. So I'm putting a string down here, down this one here. I'm leaving it up like this. 
carefully pressing everything down. Don't press too hard because that will ruin your whole DIY project. And now you have to be patient because this whole thing has to dry. And that can take some time. It is evening now here, so I'm going to let it dry for the whole evening. Maybe there is one thing I can do. Using my fingers to glue down the whole thing. So just take some glue between your fingers and then wipe the glue here up and down. This glue is drying up transparent, so that is good. Oh, and I was glued to the tablecloth. So just do it like this while you're holding the end of the blue string. That is important. That's what I feel now, at least with yarn it is. Maybe it is better to do this job with a brush. The yarn is already pulling up itself. Be careful with that. Okay. Am I satisfied so far? I think I am. Just dripping down some glue here on the final loose parts. And also here where they merge into each other. So just leaving some extra drops here. You won't see them. Tomorrow I will see how it dried up. But the base now needs to be strong so we can work with it throughout the rest of the DIY. Okay, let me check it one more time. Everything pressed nicely onto each other. If not, then feel free to press it down yourself. And then leave it this way. Now, very easy to have clean hands. Just remove the gloves like this, fold them into each other, clean hands at once. Okay, I'm going to see you tomorrow and leave this to dry. See you soon. Here I am again. It is the next day and look how the star dried up. Here I see it from the side. As you can see, it is still pretty flexible. Maybe that's because I use yarn instead of twine. Time to finish off the project. I'm leaving it up on the cork. Um, you can take it off if you have twine. I think that is more than strong enough, but not when you're working with this material. So I'm just pouring some glue. Oh, that was a big layer of glue. Some glue black back into the bowl. And then I'm actually going to do the same as I did last evening. So just soak some yarn or thread or whatever you want to use in the glue. Don't forget the gloves. And I finished another bottle of glue. Luckily this thing cost only 70 or 80 euro cents, so that isn't that much. Scissors. Very important to have scissors. I'm um, going to soak the whole thing and then carefully going to wrap around the star in different ways, just as the way you like it. Okay, here is some yarn. Cut it off apart. Just a little bit because there is a layer of thick glue. I think I had to shake it well before applying it. Maybe this is also the reason why. <laughs> This yarn is still a little bit flexible because the real thick glue was apparently in the bottom of the bottle. Dump me. Just going to pour it through the glue. There is a very annoying fly traveling as well around here. Maybe he likes the smell of the glue. I don't know because it was near the 
bowl with the glue in it. Just a little bit in. And then doing the same, removing the excess glue with my hands. I'm looking at this, I think it is a better idea to just take this thing off. Carefully going to do that. If it works, I'm the lucky one. If it doesn't, then I have to work with it like this. So there we go. The top part is completely dry and the bottom part isn't because there was the most glue attached. Last one. And there we go. Oh, well, this looks actually pretty cute. <laughs> Yay. He wrap some glue on the beginning of the yarn. Really soak it in. I think I'm going to leave it up here. And then I'm just start, as you can see, wrapping around the yarn just the way as I like it. I'm going to be very careful, don't press too hard or otherwise I will ruin the complete shape of the star I'm afraid. So far so good and I'm trying to guide the yarn slowly through the glue so that there won't be any big knots or messed up yarn and this way the yarn gets some more time to fill up with glue just work around carefully don't pull too hard can pull harder if you have twine, but not with yarn. It's a very delicate thing to work with. Should have realized before doing this. But on the other hand, now you get a really exclusive ornament or DOI. Maybe just laying it down is the best I can do. And then carefully take out some more yarn it's to be a little bit closer to the other one here that looks good now let's move over here or maybe this part is better. Laying it down again. Pulling the yarn through. Going to switch off the camera soon. Soaking it in is really important. Wine soaks up the glue better than the yarn does because the yarn is a little, yeah, well, it's acrylic, not natural, but also because it's a little bit greasy. So I'm going to work my way around this ornament and then I have to let it dry. I think the rest of the day it's now morning and hopefully tomorrow morning it is finished and I will show it to you. There we have it, the pink star ornament. Um, it is really soaked up with glue and I'm going to let it dry. Uh, in the sun inside hopefully that is warm so the drying process will be a little bit quicker as I said I think you have to dry this the rest of the day maybe even overnight um, maybe blow drying it is a good idea but I'm not going to try that right now because um, I don't want to disturb the drying process in this stadium um, yeah this is it actually now the only thing we can do is just wait I'm going to lay it upon a, a plate Plastic one hopefully does, doesn't stick to the plate itself, and then we'll see tomorrow how it turned out.
Here is the final shot of the two ornaments. They're really cute in my opinion. We'll have a close-up here. Well, here and there you see that the glue really stick thick onto the yarn. And on the other hand, that makes it of really good quality and also pet proof. Okay, that was it. Let us know what you think of this really cute and easy DIY. So that was it for today. Jenny and I are so happy that you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, give the video a big like, and Jenny and I hope to see you back again in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, everyone.